this segment i feel like i'm gonna disappoint a lot of people and i'm probably gonna say it every single time and welcome back to my channel if you're new here thank you so much for tuning in please like comment and subscribe if you're interested in more health and nutrition related content please keep on watching so today we are back with another part in the segment dietitian debunks diet trends and today i'm gonna be debunking low carb i will also debunk keto separately but i feel like they're quite similar so i'll see i'll see what. before we get into it i just want to put out a disclaimer that this video is purely for educational and entertainment purposes only so if you have any specific health needs please go and see a health professional and this is just from my own research that i've done on the topic from my perspective as a community service dietitian so also keep that in mind when you're watching but yeah basically just the definition of a low carb diet essentially is a diet which has moderate protein low carb is usually about 50 grams 40 to 60 but 50 grams on average of carbs per day and a low carb diet is also essentially how low carb or keto diets came into being so basically they were used to treat epilepsy in children in the 1920s so it's actually quite interesting i've mentioned this before if you watch ubumbo you'll remember me mentioning this go follow them on instagram but yeah it's actually so interesting to see how a lot of the diets that now have claims for weight loss and all of that actually originate from being used for some sort of clinical medical treatment so that's something that's interesting yeah so just doing the the google search you know i st always start off with a google search this is what low carb diets have been said to be beneficial for blood sugar control blood pressure control cholesterol lowering properties weight loss which is one of the main ones and the main reasons why people go low carb and also appetite control okay so i'm just gonna go right ahead and tackle all of them in no specific order let's get right into it in terms of appetite control where this comes from is because when you go low carb you end up having a majority of your total energy from your diet coming from protein and from fats and protein when you have a high higher protein diet protein actually is a lot more satisfying or satiating so you get full a lot quicker when eating something that has quite a bit of protein in it so that's where maybe the potential appetite reduction claims come from so yeah and obviously also having a diet that's much higher higher in fat especially if you're specifically keto which is about 70 to 80 percent of fat in your diet then fat is also really really makes you to get satisfied a lot quicker when you have a, a, a meal that's high in fat so that might be um, where the appetite reduction claim sort of comes from and then when it comes to blood sugar control there have been meta-analysis and systematic reviews that have been done yes i'm bringing out the science i'm trying not to bore you but it's so important to understand the science and for me to to relay the science to you because nutrition is extremely evidence-based especially as a dietitian it's my responsibility to show you the science in the most understandable way when it comes to the claims about blood sugar so basically there was a meta-analysis which was done so basically that's where they look at a bunch of different studies and sort of analyze them and basically looked at the effect of dietary restriction of carbs on diabetics basically what they found was they basically looked at the effect that a low carb or carb restrictive diet has on diabetics by looking at a specific marker called HbA1c which is like it's a marker which sort of is used to determine how well someone has been controlling their blood sugar levels so it's more like a long-term marker which shows you how well you've been controlling your blood sugar levels over a longer period of time whereas if you take blood that's more um, at that point in time how your blood sugar levels are at that point so yeah it's 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 a very accurate measure and what they found was that there was a difference um, and the HbA1c did go down which is a good thing at the three and the six month mark but at the 12 and 24 month mark there was no significant difference in that specific diabetic marker so that just shows you that there are some short-term benefits but in terms of the long term there aren't necessarily that many benefits that can be seen but there was another study which was done which is important to note and basically um, it was a systematic review and meta-analysis and it showed that low-carb diets actually have a positive
positive effects on lowering blood sugar in people with type 2 diabetes. But basically they were saying that the differences couldn't necessarily been seen as superior to any other traditional diet. So if you're someone who is diabetic and you're considering going low carb, go to a dietitian who can help cater that to you. But otherwise, it isn't necessary to go low carb to help controlling your blood sugar levels because we still need a lot more research to come out. But the research that is coming out is going in the right direction. In terms of fat and your fat profile, your lipid profile, there needs to be more research that should be done on the long-term benefits. But there were studies that said that there was an increase in good cholesterol in the short term. But obviously we do know that if you're eating a lot of fat, especially um, your harder and saturated fats, it increases your risk of developing heart diseases in the future. That's why we need more research done on the long-term effects that a low-carb diet will have on your fat or lipid profile. The studies in terms of cholesterol and the benefits for cholesterol are very much short term and obviously we know health is a life thing. You wanna be healthy for life. So we need more research on the long-term benefits that a low carb diet has on your um, cholesterol and fat or lipid profile to actually fully back those claims. So the next claim is weight loss. So basically before I go into the weight loss claim, I just wanna explain the signs behind what happens in your body when you go low carb because I think that that's very important to understand why weight loss actually happens when you go low carb. So basically your body's main energy source is carbs, right? So that's where your body gets most of its energy to be able to fuel your daily activities, to, to chill, to run, to be able to sustain you through your workouts, like everything, everything, to sleep. So when it comes to low carb diets, basically when you stop having carbs be your main energy source, so when you cut out a majority of carbs from your diet, your body starts to go into some sort of starvation mode. So what your body does to protect itself is that it has extra energy stores that we call glycogen stores. So it starts to use up those stores to give you energy or to give you energy to, to keep on functioning instead of relying on the energy that comes from carbs. And once those energy stores that that you have have been completely used up your liver starts to essentially use fat for energy it starts to produce ketone bodies which essentially give your body energy instead of getting energy from carbs so obviously for the general person if you're like oh, okay my body's gonna start using fat for energy you're going to be under the impression that you know you're burning more fat that's what your body needs to do to to keep on functioning and it's gonna get its energy from what you give it which is majority if you're low carb you're eating a lot more protein and and fats. But one thing that you do need to consider is that there's no such thing as targeted fat loss or targeted weight loss. So going low carb isn't going to make you lose belly fat. It's not going to make you lose fat in a specific area because we don't know the mechanism and where your body is actually going to lose the fat. So yeah, and when your body starts to go through that process of creating ketone bodies, which is ketogenesis, it does actually lead to um, loss of also lean body mass. So when you're losing weight, you're losing weight because you're losing muscle mass and you're losing weight because you're losing water weight because that process of using up your glycogen or your energy source and switching to using ketone bodies or energy actually takes up a lot of water to actually fuel you're gonna lose a lot of water weight when you go or you, when you start going low carb which is completely understandable um so yeah that's why when you go low carb you can't necessarily I mean, so you don't know if the weight loss is because of water weight or lean body mass loss. And when we speak about low carb diets and, you know, them, you feeling more um, satisfied and satiated also because you're cutting out one of your body's main energy sources. And I mean, most of us, a majority of our meals have starches. So if you're cutting out most of those starches, you're going to go into calorie deficits. So that's also um, may contribute to initial weight loss. Also, when it comes to weight loss, remember, weight loss isn't as like straightforward or linear as we actually think it is. There's so much that goes behind how it happens and all of those different mechanisms. It's very scientific. Basically, there is research that has spoken about some short-term weight loss um, when it comes to um, low-carb diets, but none of it was 
none of the research showed that they were able to actually sustain and maintain long-term weight loss so it is again a quick fix let's talk side effects so if you're gonna go low carb it's very likely that you'll end up experiencing something called keto flu so keto flu is essentially you experiencing stomach upsets confusion because confusion and basically feeling hangry and not being able to concentrate well because your brain uses glucose for energy and glucose is what is found in carbs so when you cut a majority of that out and your body or your brain starts using ketone bodies initially it only provides 70 to 80 percent of the energy that your brain needs to actually function so that will significantly impact your concentration and essentially lead to something that is also called brain fog which is basically an umbrella term for all of that confusion and um, lack of concentration and all of that also constipation is a big big side effect constipation is because carbs are so important because they have a lot of fiber and we get a majority of our fiber from carbs that we eat so when you're cutting out carbs you're not having that fiber that your body needs to keep you know keep keep things going keep things moving out of the body yeah constipation is a massive massive side effect and for some people that might be something that happens initially and wears off yeah fiber is very important it's important for your gut it's it feeds your gut essentially it feeds your gut bacteria and it helps with bowel movements so that you can actually go to the bathroom fiber is very important some of the side effects also include having bad breath which is an interesting one if your partner starts complaining you know why it's that low carb diet remember that carbs also have a lot of vitamins and minerals which are really good for your health so by cutting out carbs you may have the potential for being at risk of getting certain um, vitamin and mineral deficiencies or as we call them micronutrient deficiencies so just be mindful of that and some people feel like they don't have as much energy initially when they go low carb which is understandable because again you that's your body carbs are your body's main source of energy so if you're gonna cut them out woo, yeah you're gonna experience some fatigue yeah so essentially now let's look at the pros and cons of a low carb diet some people when they go low carb they end up eating a lot more uh, plant-based proteins they end up incorporating a lot more fruits and vegetables into their diet so that's a benefit and obviously when you're eating like that that's going to reduce your risk of developing certain heart diseases um, and obviously another pro is weight loss but it's initial weight loss it's it doesn't necessarily lead to sustained weight loss because if you switch back to um, the traditional diet that you were on previously because low carb diets are so difficult to maintain then you gain all the weight back because remember a lot of that weight was actually water and loss of um, lean body mass or muscle mass so yeah that's that's something to also consider also remember that you yeah it leads to constipation you know fiber is so important um, for your gut health and when you're not having enough fiber that could also increase your risk of getting certain gi cancers and also people who go like low carb it's usually high fat and moderate protein so the high fat especially may lead to increased intake of more saturated fats which if you have more saturated and trans fats which are your harder fats that can increase your bad cholesterol or ldl cholesterol that that can have an impact on your heart health and increase cardiovascular or heart disease risk but eating healthy shouldn't be something that's difficult and um, that isn't doable and that isn't sustainable so always remember if you're going to choose a diet ask yourself is it something that you can do in the long run it is that you can do and still enjoy life and still socialize and go out and have dinner with friends and if that's that's it if a low-carb diet works for you that's also fine please 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 do what works for you but yeah there's no need for you to now change if you're someone who eats carbs to change to a low carb diet the majority of people's plates is filled filled filled, filled, filled with starch and filled with meat and then the veg is like this small um if we think of just the general south african diet um, we do eat a lot more carbs than we should be but we shouldn't be cutting them out completely you could just change the types of carbs you're having and maybe um, reduce them slightly and also include carbs that have more fiber because then that also can really help for not only for all of the health benefits of fiber but also for the potential of weight loss as well i think that all food groups have value and they all benefit your body and are all there for a reason so it's so important to not cut out any sort of food group completely carbs don't just have carbs you know like all of our different food groups have other um 
health benefits in terms of vitamins and minerals but also carbs have about two to three grams of protein per serving and plant-based protein are also rich in carbs and fiber going low carb to be honest is a quick fix to weight loss it's not something that is super sustainable in the long term even though there is some people or there are some people who can and if you are one of those people who can sustain it um, and it works for you that's also fine um, but for the general population the general public it's really difficult to sustain and maintain yeah it's so you know how satisfied you feel after having you know a meal with quality carbs and you know fruit and veggies and you know good quality protein and fats like you feel so satisfied if i was low carb i would i would i would not like low carb would never work for me but anyways i hope that this is really helpful i hope that i was able to debunk this diet trend and if you're someone who's considering going low carb do your research if you're able to read the more scientific studies from um, research platforms like PubMed and that rather do that but I'll link some of the um, articles that I mentioned in this video down below so you can go and read them if you're interested otherwise I hope you really enjoyed this video please like comment and subscribe and remember we're on the road to 2k um, I really hope that by the time this video launches we'll be on 3k because I'm literally bulk shooting I'm probably gonna say road to 2k for like two months <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.